to the first training video that we're doing in a series of simple instructional videos that we're going to use for the Oxalate um, training courses, but also for the public. Now, this one, as the name says, is going to be about the pitot tube. Pitot tubes have been around for a very long time. They've been used in aircraft and various um, other applications, including steam boilers. Um, what they are effectively is a bent piece of metal. They are not an instrument in their own right. What we do need is we need a device such as this, a manometer. This is an electronic manometer to attach to the pitot. It simply brings the reading to the machine. Now, in a duct, it is the instrument of choice. I know some of you will use a hot wire anemometer. And if you work for me and you put a hot wire anemometer into the duct, I'll break your fingers. So it's anything in the duct is going over that very fine head. You can't position it to get the airstream. It is just not accurate. And before we go any further, some of you will say, oh, well, we don't need a pitot tube when we're working for static pressure. We can simply stick the tube in. And what I want to show a little while on is how that is incredibly inaccurate. If we were to look at the pitot itself, and we were to look at it in detail, I'm not sure if we can get a close-up of this, but right down here, we have a series of peripheral holes around the edge. Now these, as we will see, pick up the static pressure. Right on the end, on the nose, there is a hole. Now, now it is such a common misconception that that picks up the static pressure. Maybe if we look at the drawing I have on the board, we'll see why that is incorrect. Now, if we come to the board and we zoom in on this section here, apologies for the very terrible drawing skills here, but here you have a tube inside another tube. The hatched lines is showing the one on the end, and certainly, certainly it's picking up velocity pressure. Let's just park that for a moment. The side holes are picking up the static pressure. So they're picking up the static pressure. But if you can imagine, static pressure is like a ball of energy. So there will be static pressure acting on here. So in fact, velocity pressure plus static pressure is what is hitting the end hole. Now that, as we know from our basic principles, Velocity pressure plus static pressure equals total pressure. And if we follow this tube all the way to the top, we will find that the inner tube is running up and it comes out the very top. And I've marked it that the connection at the very top is total pressure and the connection at the side is static pressure. Now, the easy way to remember it is static beginning with an S for the side leg beginning with an S, total beginning with a T is connected to the top connection. We will never actually, in examining and testing of LEV, want the total pressure. But here's the clever part. If we actually connect both legs together, as we will see, onto the manometer, the two statics will cancel out and you'll be left with velocity. So if we come back to the instrument now, and we look at the ways that we're going to do it, we're going to switch on our fan. We'll see that we actually have an airflow. Here we have the connections. Side connection, we remember, is for static pressure. Top we're not going to use top on its own, but top would be total. One way of remembering it is if I put it on the side and we get a V shape for velocity, then both connections together will give you velocity pressure. So, 
Next, the only other thing at the top that we have an interest in is this directional bar and it simply shows us which way the pitot is facing. Now a very interesting thing to do, this, no matter where you are in the ducted system, that will always point towards the hood, towards the oncoming airflow. As we can see here, it is pointing to the oncoming airflow, the directional bar. Back to the drilled holes, you will see I have two holes drilled at right angles to one another. If we were to look at the official PITO British standard, and I'm going to look at the board now, um, I've drawn, uh, again, not a very good um, graphic, but I've shown the test points that the British standard would say, and they are at very strange intervals. The first insertion point is 0.026 times the diameter. The second one is 0.082 times the diameter, and so it goes on. Incredible. You're up a ladder, you try not to fall off, and you're going to work out, this is a 150 mil duct, you're going to work out 3.9 millimeter in, the next one would be 12.3 millimeter in. I really don't think we're going to do that. Now, if we look back at the pitot now, now, and we get a, a close-up of the pitot, you will see here on the pitot there are sliding rings. The technique that I have always used is as follows. Pull one of the rings out of the way. Now we're going to put it into the duct. If we put it carefully into the duct until we hit the other side and the holes are a little bit small push the ring until it's just inside the wall thickness. If I then use a tape measure that will give me my duct diameter but importantly by eye I will move the other rings approximately equidistant. The rings then tell us how far into the duct we are because once we have entered the duct you lose track of how far in you are. Use the rings to do your different test points. If we look at the top of this directional bar it will tell us to keep it parallel with the duct I don't want to see it twisting to one side or bending over. Lovely parallel to the duct and in at the different insertion points. Now, I've used the very accurate method on this duct. I've used the equal by eye method using the rings. The difference is something like 15.6 meters per second accurate and 15.4 meters per second using the duct with the slidey rings. It's neither here nor there, so I don't think we're going to worry about that. Now just a point, um, there's a lot of information being thrown at you. At the end of the video, um, and with the instructions on the video, you'll see that we've got a PITO briefing note, and that will give you all the detail so that you can remember what to do. So, why don't we use, I'm going to use a smaller one. I'm going to use a smaller pitot. It makes it easier to go in and out of the duct. I've already set it such that it is about the duct diameter. I've already set my rings to about equal distance spacings. I have a manometer. I'm going to connect the manometer to the side leg only. And the side leg only, if you remember, is going to give us static pressure. I'll switch my manometer on. An easy thing you can do is under the arm, press the zero button to make sure it's absolutely zeroed. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a reading for static pressure only. One reading only is sufficient somewhere in the middle of the duct. This one is reading, if we can see, about minus 160 pascals. 
thereabouts, 158, 160 pascals. Oh, just as a matter of interest, let's see what happens when we just push a tube in, because I know some of you like the tube. What will, what will that do? Oh, it gives me 207 pascals. Let's wiggle the tube about a bit more. 192 pascals. I think you'll admit that using the instrument is by far the more accurate way of doing it. Please don't stick the tubes into the duct. Now we're going to put both tubes on and we're going to then, if you remember, two tubes together like this are velocity pressure. Now as a matter of interest, this instrument along with many of your instruments has a velocity button. It'll do all the maths for you, so it'll take the pressure that's that's been resolved on the pitot tube and it will convert it directly to a meters per second. Now those of you who are going to be doing the P601 or the P604, you're not allowed to do that in the little formative exam. You have to do the pressure in Pascals and then if we can look at the board we're going to look at this equation here which is the equation we use to convert the pressure, here it is here, into a velocity in meters per second. So, for example, we get a pressure of 145 pascals. We put it into a calculator. You hit this square root button. You get an answer, and you multiply that answer by 1.29, and that will give you the velocity. What we are going to do is put this into the, the duct, take a couple of readings as velocity pressure. So here we go, there is our first reading, we're getting 86, 87 pascals, second reading about 83, it's very accurate, third reading 90, you'll see that we're getting very consistent readings because a nice long piece of ducting and there's not a lot of turbulence at the point of reading, so a whole series of readings 78, 79, all the way through to the end. Last thing to remind you is if you would like some more information, don't forget to look at our briefing note, which is downloadable as a PDF. Thanks very much for your time. Hope you enjoy using your people. Still